Welcome back to Allen High School Pre-AP Chemistry. We are talking about models of the atom and right now we're doing calculations on electromagnetic radiation. Now the first one's not really a calculation, it's more of the qualitative and I think one of the things that will help you as you're going through these questions is to write down the symbol where there are words. So this is asking something about wavelength and frequency. So if you see those two symbols together, hopefully that will link your mind to this equation that C is equal to lambda nu. Now we already talked about that earlier, uh, but I'm gonna do it very quickly here to show you how we could show it in this equation. To do that, I need to solve for one or the other variable. So I'm gonna solve for frequency. Frequency is going to be C over the wavelength of the light that's involved. And now when you see them across from one another, you can see that as I increase my wavelength, remember we're talking about making it longer, we would actually decrease our frequency. Fewer waves would go by. It's like, remember we talked about stopping and counting cars going by. If you know, all the cars are those little tiny smart cars, really, really short cars, like short wavelengths, a whole bunch of cars are gonna pass by in a second or in that time frame that you're counting, obviously not a second. But if you had like really long stretch Hummer limousines, you're gonna have, with long wavelengths, you'll have fewer cars pass through over that time frame. Now, this, the mathematical term for that is called indirect or an inverse relationship. I tend to use the word inverse relationship when one goes up and the other goes down. Now, in this calculation, it says if the wavelength is known to be, so that number represents my wavelength, either list your givens or identify them in the context of the question. It asks me what is my frequency. Again, once I see those symbols, hopefully you will grab the formula that we need. C is equal to lambda nu. Wavelength is giving in nanometers, and by the way, since that's between 400 and 700, we now know that we're talking about visible light. I like to use my 3.0 times 10 to the 17th for my speed of light. Now that's gonna equal my frequency times my wavelength, which is 550. Now all I have to do is a little quick cross multiplying, get that wavelength over to the other side. In other words, another way you can think of cross multiplying is to divide both sides by 550. And I am left, whoops, that's a 550. I am left then with frequency all by itself make that a little more legible. And if you solve that for frequency, we're going to get 5.45 times 10 to the 14th. Remember it's seconds to the minus one or hertz. I'll, put, I'll be using seconds to the minus one more often than not because it gives us that SI unit. Now, it gives us a frequency here this time. So we're given this value and it gives us the frequency. And this time it asks us if the light is visible. Well, the only way we know it's visible based on what we've made you memorize is we have to find out if it's between 700 nanometers to 400 nanometers. And the only way we can do that is to calculate the wavelength. So when you're doing these problems, when you see a question that's asking, is the light visible? That's telling you, you have to calculate your wavelength. So again, we have this formula up here, and I'm going to solve this for wavelength before I put my numbers in. It's called a literal equation, and I like to solve it without the numbers. It's a little simpler. I divide both sides by the frequency, and that's what I would get. Again, I want wavelength in nanometers to compare what I know, and I would get three times 10 to the 17th divided by my frequency, 9.45 times 10 to the 14th, E14, being a little simplistic there in my symbols, 
and we get 317 nanometers. Now, the question asks is, if it's not visible, is it ultraviolet and or IR? Now, it doesn't fall between 700 and 400. Instead, it falls on this end of our visible light. And that's why I said you had to know that that high energy end is ultraviolet. So the answer would be that this is likely in the ultraviolet range of light. Now, let's try the next one. Uh, you can slow these down, you can rewind these, whatever you need to do to make sure you understand, and then come and ask me questions. Now, this time we're given, again, a wavelength, and it asks us if it's visible. Now, this is a little tricky. We already have the wavelength, so we can't really calculate the wavelength because we already have the wavelength, but it gave us, the problem gave us the wavelength in centimeters. So what we need to do, if we want to see if it's between 700 nanometers to 400 nanometers, we need to change the units of our wavelength. So we're going to have to do just a little dimensional analysis, and it brings us back to your memory. I've got 1.23 times 10 to the minus fifth centimeters. Do you remember when we did dimensional analysis, we always went through the base unit. Too many people make mistakes when they skip that base unit step. So we're not going to skip that. I want to get rid of centimeters. I'm going to use my base unit of meters. There's the prefix. That's where my one goes. It's one times 10 to the minus two. Now, once I have meters, I can get into nanometers. So I want to get rid of meters, go to nanometers, there's my prefix, there's the one. Your scientific notation goes by that lonely base unit, and meters will cancel. Now, once you complete that mathematics, what we find is, is that we have an answer of 723 nanometers. Now, it asks us if it's visible or not. So technically you need three sig figs, but the answer is not a number. The answer is yes or no. And in this case, the answer is yes. It is, it's between 700 and 400. It's in the reddish orange range likely. You don't have to memorize exactly. You just have to know that it's in that visible range. Now, let's move on to the next one. And again, slow it down, rewind it. That's the luxury of the flipped curriculum. This time it asks me, what is my energy? If I have a photon, remember that's that little packet of light envisioning light as a particle, and it gives us our frequency. And then again, it asks us, is this light visible? So we really need to do a two-step component to this problem. So let me do the first step above it and the second step below it. So we will start with the first question, what is the frequency? Well, energy is equal to h nu. So if I solve that for frequency, I get frequency is equal to my energy divided by Oh, they gave me the frequency. I blew that one. Let me go back. Let me start over. Um, it asks me for my energy. Sorry, I got carried away. So all I have to do is plug in 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34th times my frequency, which is 7.85 E15. Now, if I solve that then for my energy, sorry about that mess up, but I don't want to start the video over we'll get our energy in joules, and it's 5.19 times 10. Very small, tiny, tiny amounts of energy in a single photon, and that's joules for every photon. Now, I want you to remember, it's not so common to write joules per photon, but I do want you to get used to that. Now it asks us, is this visible. So again, to answer that question, is that visible, we have to do lambda, our wavelength, in nanometers. And we can do it two ways. We can start back at energy, or we can use C is equal to lambda nu, because we have our frequency given right here. And so our wavelength 
is going to be our speed of light over our frequency. Notice I divided both sides by frequency. Since I want wavelength in nanometers, are you starting to see why memorizing this 3 times 10 to the 17th can really save you quite a bit of time as we're working these problems? And I'm going to divide by that frequency 7.85 times 10 to the 15th. Now, if I do that division, I get 38.2 nanometers. Now, that is definitely a big NO in terms of the visible. I'm not even sure if it's within the, uh, the ultraviolet. It may be even shorter wavelength or higher energy than the ultraviolet, but it's certainly not in our 700 to 400 range on those. Now, we have two more calculations to do here. I'm going to go ahead and do them quickly in this video. So we have a wavelength uh, of 550, and it asks me for the energy. I like to use the two-step, or the one-step formula, as opposed to the two-step formula. And the one step is energy is hc over lambda. And I'm going to plug in Planck's constant. Remember, that's given to you. Although by the time you're done with all the homework, you really do know these. I'm going to use the speed of light in nanometers since my wavelength is given in nanometers. And that does not require any algebra. I just have to crank through those numbers. Make sure you're plugging in your scientific notation correctly. And if we do that, you're going to find we have an energy of 3.62 times 10 to the minus 19th joules for every photon. Now, you could have done this in two steps. You could have done, we have wavelengths, so we could have solved for the frequency using this formula, and then we could have plugged the frequency into this formula. These are both given, and they're given to you because that's what AP gives. Um, but I liked the one step. Now, this is a similar pro problem, but it gives us our energy, and it asks us if it's visible. So again, if it asks us about visible, we have to solve for our wavelength in nanometers. It's an implied part of this problem that you're going to have to wrap your heads around because that's what you're going to see on the test. So I like to memorize my little one step, and if this little old lady that teaches you on a daily basis can memorize that, I bet you can too. So 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34th times C, which is 3 times 10 to the 17th. Our wavelength is unknown. And that's all, that all has to equal our energy, which is 3.33 um, times 10 to the minus 19th is equal to all that. Now, you're going to have to do some cross multiplying. It's pretty straightforward. Sometimes you have a tough time solving for a, a something in a denominator. And we simply have to cross multiply, bring the energy down and the wavelength up. So I'm going to leave that to you, but I want to give you the answer so you know to come and see me if you need help. That was 597 nanometers, so our answer to our question is yes. Okay, wow, I know that was a little long, but I didn't want to have to start another video when it was going to be so short. So until I see you again, this is signing off.